Okay. I will call our March uh, meeting of the Delaware County Transportation Improvement District to order and ask that you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome. I'm Chris Boserman, Delaware County Engineer. To my right is our uh, Vice Chair, Tracy Davies. To my left, Cy Keeley, our Secretary Treasurer. And uh, in the peanut gallery, uh, yeah. <laughs> Pat Blaney and Tom Price, uh, board members. And uh, with that, Sarah, I see no, do we have any public comment? We do not. Joe, nothing you want to uh, <laughs> expound on this morning? Is, uh, all right. Uh, also should recognize County Commissioner Jeff Benton, who's uh, with us this morning also. The, uh, having no public comment, we'll move to item three of the agenda for the approval of the minutes from our January meeting. You have those minutes for, I uh, hope you've had a chance to review. Are there any changes or is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, from board member reports, anything from any of the board members? Not at this time. All right. Uh, I would uh, share with you the we're going to talk about the TID grant program later in our agenda, but the transportation budget, uh, that uh, state transportation budget that passed the House has an increase in the pot of money available for TID applications that went from $4.5 million in current law to $10 million. So it's something that we've been uh, talking a lot about, and um, I know our, um, our county lobbyists worked on that issue and the uh, our state association uh, worked on that issue and so um, it's just through the house has to uh, has to get through the Senate and so it's not uh, it's not law yet but it's a good sign that um, um, that our voices were heard about the need for an increase in that uh, in that pool of grant funding for TIDs Let's move on to Secretary Treasurer's report, Cy. Yeah, the current cash balance is three million two hundred eighty-seven thousand three hundred forty-four dollars and seventeen cents. And the uh, audit will be starting soon, so hopefully in the next meeting I'll have an update for you. Did I sign that engagement letter? That, that you, there was a. Yeah, I did. I, okay, I thought I did. It was electronic, and so I want to make sure I didn't. Yeah, you signed. Okay, thank you. Um, Move on to our staff report, Mr. Riley. We were all holding our breath, hoping that uh, you, you weren't had to abandon us this morning. So we're glad we're glad you didn't. Well, thank you and good morning. Uh, oh, I was walking in late. I was actually on the phone with the deputy director, uh, Tony Tarowski. So oh, good you know, about some of these uh, projects, and so I have a very fresh uh, uh, report, I guess. So, good. Uh, I'll start with. A quick recap on our 71, 36, 37 project. Uh, you're aware we have um, MS consultants under contract. Uh, they are uh, moving ahead with phase A final design. I would say plans are roughly 50% uh, complete, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, Joe Sullivan can uh, kick me remotely under the table if we're not. <laughs> um, and so we. Uh, uh, are continuing work on that. Um, one thing to add, uh, this was not discussed at the last meeting because I don't know that we had a uh, really clear picture at that point, but uh, we have uh, actually submitted a RAISE grant. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration takes applications. They have a number of different direct programs uh, that they offer to state and local agencies, RAISE being one of those. Uh, don't ask me what the acronym stands for, but um, uh, long story short, we submitted a grant request for $8.7 million towards Phase A. 
to try to uh, close any remaining funding gap and really minimize the amount of county funding that we'll have in phase A, which allows the, the county uh, and, and TID to focus funding on future phases. So uh, that was actually submitted at the end of February. Um, I'm not quite sure on the time frame on when we'll hear grant announcements or uh, inquiries for additional information, but I'll keep you up to date um, on anything I hear. So um, I'll move on to Homer and Sawmill Parkway. Uh, that project is finishing up. Uh, the uh, contractor was actually working on the traffic signal, uh, the new traffic signals. Those, I believe, went into operation last week, um, and they're uh, basically finishing up all the kind of cleanup work, roadside grading, uh, the remainder of, of paths, and so forth. So that project should be done within about the next month, and I would hope to have a closeout uh, for you to approve in May. Uh, if not May, it would probably be June. So uh, that is on, on budget or under budget, uh, so we're in good shape there. Um, Some of Parkway Phase G2. Uh, you're aware or you recall that we uh, spoke about Phase G last year. Um, the City of Delaware uh, ended up building, uh, I want to say roughly 1,500 feet of new roadway off the end of Sawmill Parkway to serve a new uh, business park um, on the north side of Sawmill Parkway. Um, there has been continued interest in that business park and actually expanding it to the west. And so uh, had some discussions recently with city staff about basically having another phase of Sawmill Parkway progress to the west of where it ends now. <coughs> uh, at a minimum, um, there would be about a 950 foot extension to the road as it stands now. Um, that would not get all the way to section line road. This would be another sub phase of the project. Uh, this is pretty fluid, so I think it's still in the works and we have to have some more conversations with the city, but um, I think under the next agenda item, I'll, I'll want some input or we'll, we'll want to talk about uh, potentially uh, pursuing a TID grant uh, for this project because there is a direct nexus to some job creation uh, within the city and within that business park. So we can talk more about that in a minute. Um, and then finally, uh, Bale Canyon Road improvements. Uh, you'll recall that uh, we uh, are assisting Orange Township uh, have provide or going to provide a $500,000 grant uh, to Orange Township towards that project. Uh, the contract was awarded by the township for $3.295 million uh, maybe a month ago. And so that work will start this summer and should be wrapped up by the fall. So that'll be a nice improvement on Bill Canyon Road. It's, that road's in pretty rough shape right now. So that'll address some safety and as well as condition issues for that, that first phase. This is one of three phases. Kind of the, this, the phase one involves the section just south of Orange Road goes under the freeway uh, to a point just to the south of the freeway. So um, the township's kind of trying to bite that off in three, three manageable pieces, uh, this being the first of those. So. Um, I believe that's all I have for the project updates. Um, so if there's any questions, glad to answer it, Tom. Yeah. Uh, the 950 feet on this, on face G, how many more feet we got to go to get the section line? Uh, I would say probably uh, beyond that, maybe 2,000, 2,500 feet to get to section line road. That's, that's right off the top of my head. Uh, don't quote uh -huh. me on okay. that, but it's, um, the remaining section would be significant still. Um, we've had we've had a number of conversations with the city and I know they're, uh, from what I've been told, the city certainly has an interest in making that connection, but um, I think the funding is is an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're, made, they're, they're trying to bite this thing off in manageable pieces that they can actually afford to, to get built. Any other questions for Rob? or about any of these projects. Rob, thank you. I'm gonna ask you to, um, to 
lead us in the discussion on um, on the grant applications in item seven. Sure. So <coughs> um, you're aware that ODOT, uh, is, as Chairman Bosman mentioned, uh, currently has a four and a half million dollar pot of money available to TIDs. We've applied for it previous years. The uh, Grant application cycle is open right now through the end of the month, uh, and I wanted to have a conversation with uh, the board about potential candidates uh, to apply for that funding. I think we've got um, <coughs> the one <coughs> excuse me, uh, the one candidate being Fal uh, Salmon Parkway Phase G2. Uh, I think certainly uh, checks off a lot of the boxes for job creation, which ODOT Jobs and Commerce is looking for. There's another uh, project that um, have not have not briefed you on, but uh, really, I would say materialized within the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, we've had conversations with uh, Bill Lozier at the Licking County TID. He heads up the, the Licking TID, as well as um, Cornell Robertson at Franklin County. Uh, there's a, an effort to uh, look at basically uh, a road that would extend south from County Line Road, and I apologize, I don't have an exhibit for you, but basically from uh, the Licking Frank, excuse me, Licking Delaware uh, County Line Road, which uh, essentially stops just to the south of, um, well, it, north of Route 62. Uh, there's, a, there's a desire to look at basically connection over to Beach Road familiar with that area uh, Beach Road in Licking County runs all the way down to the 161 it has an interchange there's a there's a lot of jobs uh, in that area and basically uh, looking at a connection from County Line Road to Beach Road um, the this would be a Licking County led project <coughs> the interest we have in it is that uh, the project would upgrade a portion of County Line Road that we maintain uh, basically from the very southeast corner of the county up to Fancher Road. Uh, it's half mile to a mile. I'm, I'm not quite sure on the length, but um, getting that, that section wide. And it's, you know, that's a, a, a section of road that's really never been improved. It's maybe 20 feet wide with, with uh, ditches <coughs> right up against the side of the road. Um, some of the traffic projections we've seen based on the effort and some of what we've shared with you already does show a pretty significant impact uh, from the Intel development on County Line Road as well as Fancher Road. So, so that section is pretty much the same as Fancher Road from section line to 62. It's, it's a little better shape than that, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, I think it is, Pat, okay. yeah. Uh, the count, I, th our, I thought it tied into, I thought it County Line Road tied into 62. It does, it becomes Tippett Road uh, okay. This would be kind of a diagonal southeast okay. road over to Beach Road. Beach Road is the next one yeah. over that runs from 62 south down to 161. <coughs> so uh, getting this kind of direct connection from County Line Road over to 62 um, at Beach. So as, again, this is all very recent. Uh, not a lot of planning has gone into this yet, but I think that's what the ask would be for, both for planning and potentially right-of-way acquisition um, to assist with that project. Again, our interest is is seeing Fancher Road upgraded, uh, the intersection of Fancher Road as well as County Line Road. So uh, we've identified the Fancher Road intersection as one that's going to need some attention. So, so <coughs> would this be a joint application with Licking, Franklin, and Delaware Tids? Yes, this would be, uh, that's the vision, Pat, would, would be a joint application, um, probably led by Licking County, but mm -hmm. uh, with us as a, a co-applicant. Franklin County does have some, uh, they are very supportive of the project. They do have some other projects they're pursuing in that area. Uh, I know uh, Route 605 at Walnut Street, it's, it's kind of an offset intersection that Franklin County is looking to address because that's going to become a, a safety issue as more traffic goes to that area. So um, certainly a desire if, if Franklin County isn't an applicant, they would certainly provide a letter of support based on what they've told me. Um, but for right now, I, I know that Licking County uh, is very interested. Uh, I think this is a good application, uh, just given the nexus to Intel. Um, 
ODOT is well aware of the impacts that Intel is going to have to our local systems. <coughs> uh, they've done modeling, we've done modeling uh, in, the traffic, uh, in the traffic projections. So, um, Rob, again, that's, Rob, correct yeah. me, it, did I hear you say at one point, I can't remember in what meeting, that tentatively we're looking at over $20 million worth of improvements related to Intel and additional traffic and roadway improvements? I think so. Okay. Um, uh, probably a month or more ago, uh, we started to put uh, pencil to paper mm -hmm. and, and look at some of the projects that are going to be needed in the Harlem Township area, and that total is, is in excess of $20 million. Five-year timeline, 10, three? <laughs> Five to 10. Uh, some of those, I would say the priorities being the intersections uh, at County Line Road. Uh, there's a five-legged intersection at Center Village, County Line, and, and then I think it's Duncan Plains in Licking County, and then Edwards Road is the fifth leg of that intersection, which is currently kind of awkward, um, but it will become, uh, that's almost like a, a straight shot to Intel as you uh, go from kind of our population center and, you know, Lewis Center, Westerville, uh, it's almost a straight shot to Intel taking that Center Village to Duncan Plains route. So. We know not all the traffic is going to use 37 or, or go down to the outer belt and take 161. They'll, they'll take the shortest route. That's the other, the other important thing about County Line Road. If you, if you look at, uh, you can picture southbound 71 traffic headed to Intel. Um, they come to the route 37, 36, 37 interchange, and there's a decision. Do you want to go on? You want to go on into Columbus around the outer belt to 161, uh, out to the Intel site, or uh, cut across, uh, get off at 37 intersection and head east. And as you come out of Sunbury, County Line Road becomes a, a really, sorry, <laughs> becomes a really convenient uh, uh, roadway connection, not in its current condition but the way the way that the road system is laid out it really is is ripe for uh, it being a kind of a de facto bypass of uh, of Columbus to get to get from Intel to and from the north so um, I think Licking County sees it that way also and that's why the focus on on that roadway remember what the numbers were Rob did it go to The, the traffic the volumes, traffic volumes that um, were projected they were probably doubling or more uh, based on what uh, just in the opening year um, you know it's not a heavily traveled road right now or at least county line road isn't but um, you know it would uh, I wish I had that probably I, I don't remember, remember being remember. dramatic I used to right when I was going to Reynoldsburg <coughs> Quite a bit to go over to ODA. I'd go down County Line Road and cut across and go down Jersey. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so if I could just back up to recap, I think what uh, what I'd like to propose for your consideration would be making two applications: one for Salmo Parkway Phase G2, and then a uh, second application as basically co-applicant with Licking County. So uh, we would have to prioritize those applications. Um, frankly, I think given the nexus to Intel, um, the county line application would have a very, very strong chance of being funded. Um, but that's, you know, I'll, we'll certainly proceed at, at your direction. We do have some indication from ODOT unofficially, but it seems they're, they are encouraging joint applications. They're very interested in things Intel related, and so this kind of checks two of those boxes. Um, what it doesn't check is the job creation, uh, direct job creation um, component that uh, the Sawmill G2, um, and the city's talking with you know, with specific users uh, at that location. So there are, 
there'd be easy, there'd be more job related improvements there. But um, I guess my my thought is we would rank the joint application first and the sawmill one second. But I um, agree. Yeah. What's the timeline to turn in? Uh, applications do the end of this month. Okay, so we need to act on today. So we don't need a res formal resolution to that effect, but if there's general, if uh, seems to be, I don't hear any opposition to that direction. Um, no, there's no opposition, but I think the job creation here in Delaware County is important too. It is. Yeah. It is. The uh, the thing that's hard for us to to directly link job creation to on is uh, what that means to to economic development in in Delaware County but at the, you know every meeting that we're in with Intel people they're talking about the uh, the spin-off ancillary kind of uh, development that comes with businesses that want to be in close proximity but maybe not too close proximity uh, and so um, having Having road improvement corridors that connect to the Intel site, I really think in the long term opens up a lot of the county area for, uh, for development and um, pro probably in a, uh, ultimately has a, a bigger impact than just the, you know, a thousand foot road extension in, in the city. So, uh, but I, uh, can't minimize that. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with us asking for um, for two applications, and um, I think we make we can make a strong case for both. Sounds like uh, absent of dissent, Rob. Uh, Rob, we have uh, we have direction. So. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Moving on, is there uh, anyone that uh, has any uh, compelling business for us in April? And if not, we would uh, cancel our April 12th meeting. I do not. Hearing none, uh, do we need a motion to, to cancel that? It wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't hurt. I didn't entertain a motion to cancel our April 12th meeting. Move. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Your other business to come before us today. If I could, I, I probably should have included this under my monthly report, but uh, uh, just talking to uh, Deputy Director Tarowski, uh, ODOT has a number of <coughs> efforts underway in, Lick or, excuse me, in Delaware County. Um, one of those... Uh, maybe two of those uh, involve Route 23. Uh, you may be aware that uh, ODOT is studying the 23 corridor uh, from the city of Delaware north, basically from Hillsmiller up to um, Marion County, uh, looking at trying to uh, really make that section safer and more accommodating of traffic flow. I think they're gonna be looking at some of the intersections, potentially uh, converting uh, one or more uh, to freeway interchanges, uh, namely Route 229. Uh, that's been a continuing safety location for ODOT, uh, but I know their, their study is underway uh, on that section, um, and we'll, I'm sure we'll hear more. Uh, Tony did fill me in this morning. They are uh, uh, in early stages of looking at 23 south of the city and uh, really just getting moving on that. And so that will uh, no doubt have an impact on our, some of our local roads, uh, what, we're, what we're doing and what we're seeing with those. So um, I, I bring that up solely uh, for, to let you know uh, that's being looked at. We will have more information and more discussions to follow, but uh, I was um, relieved to hear that ODOT is moving ahead with the uh, looking at the southern section of Route 23, because I think that's, uh, we all know the bottleneck in, of 23 in this area. So uh, more to come on that, but um, 
there's there's a whole bunch of projects we're, we're working with ODOT on Route 36, uh, the Berlin Business Park, uh, a lot of activity in that area, a lot of discussions, um, and so it's almost hard to <laughs> pick one to, to focus on because there's so many, but um, just uh, thought I'd offer that for what it's worth. It's good information. Uh, Mr. Chair, I was talking this morning with uh, with uh, Farm Bureau people and uh, the uh, use of eminent domain uh, in uh, highway projects is, uh, there was a, uh, a hearing yesterday, I believe, there's a house bill out there that- 64. That's uh, uh, working its way. And the, naturally the development community is opposed to any uh, wash down or re reduction of the use of eminent domain. But at the same time, uh, uh, eminent domain, uh, when, it's been, when it's used uh, for a private enterprise, such as Intel, uh, I'm not sure it would stand the light of day with, with a lot of people. It appears to me that we we probably ought to get a uh, somewhere in the middle on that uh, because going back when when we were impacted by Columbus went to put the dam on the side of the river and the, the meetings that were held uh, the use of imminent domain was was thrown out and uh, and my response to that was you're going to make me move three farmsteads and just give me the value that the eastern part of the county would sell farm ground for. And I said, it's, that's not fair. I mean, because we didn't, we didn't ask for this dam to be put up so you could have water for Columbus. So I'd like to, I'd like to think, and, and naturally, uh, Farm Bureau is strongly with farmland preservation, and, and I understand that. But at the same time, uh, I don't believe you're going to be raising corn and soybeans forever between Delaware and Marion. And uh, I don't know what this group, you know, we don't have anything to do with that uh, in the domain thing, but it's, it's, it's going to be a toughie as we continue to put more roads and ask for more right away. So I. Uh, Got several things to share about that, and I think it is an important issue for for this board. Um, we we do have as a TID eminent domain authority, yes. uh, separate from the what the county commissioners have, and so it's an important issue for us. Um, I know that um, the, the commissioners' legal counsel Eric Hostetler is uh, is all over this. Our lobbyist uh, is all over this issue. Uh, our County Engineers Association, the County Commissioners Association are engaged in this. And um, this is a, as that bill is written, uh, we all, as transportation minded folks, ought to be scared to death of it. Um, it has, I think in, in the efforts to, um, to address some of these bigger issues about the use of, of, of uh, eminent domain for economic development purposes and large, uh, you know, the, the public getting involved in using its eminent domain to, to leverage and build um, uh, private, uh, private projects. Um, it's, a real, it's a real concern. Where does, where does government's role start and stop in that? Um, Unfortunately, they painted that issue with such a broad brush that uh, it has dramatic impact on our ability to to move transportation projects in a, in a, at a reasonable speed. And um, I won't I won't get too far into the, into the details on this, but it does it does um, allow the whole the whole question of. Of a, of a commissioner's decision, or the risk board's decision about whether it's necessary for for a project to move forward, to become one of the uh, become a legal argument that we that uh, anybody challenging him in the domain has the right to challenge whether it really is truly necessary, and we have to defend the, those transportation decisions. So we're we're doing, you know, we're in a position of making a technical 
argument to uh, to a judicial uh, function that um, pro doesn't scare me so much in being able to make that argument. It scares me in terms of that being used as a delay tactic and just that that issue of necessity dragging on and on and on and on. Um, it, it'll be it'll be used to do that. So where you had a you know you have a question about the state wants to participate in taking land by eminent domain for a large economic development project, then it's probably a legitimate question of the necessity of that, right, uh, from the property owner's view. But if we, if we want to widen a road and improve an intersection because there's a safety issue, it really isn't the necessity and the decision about whether that is something that ought to happen at, at a at a government level and not, uh, there, there's not this mix of private and, and public involvement. So that's one of the, one of the big issues. Um, one, of the other, one of the other really important issues is uh, this carves out specific things that, um, uh, they can't, that are exempt from being used, eminent domain being used on that currently can. Um, and one of those that we're not a recreational path trail agency here or at the engineer's office. Uh, but it does uh, specifically prohibit the, the use of eminent domain for any, um, any component of the project related to trails. And where that might be a really important issue with somebody wanting to connect a trail through a region um, and through, through farmland somewhere, when you get into our urbanized areas of our county, um, you know, every project we do now, there are people clamoring for building trails alongside of our improvements. And it's just part of the, what we do now. And so for this law to carve, to carve out that as, a, uh, as, an, as exempt from doing so under, under eminent domain, even if it's related to one of our road projects, is really problematic and I'm not sure I've heard I've heard uh, some of the arguments from some of the people involved in this and it seems to be a notion of well, we, you know the, of taking farmland out of, out of uh, out of production to build a path connecting a, you know along county county to county to county trail system uh, that it seems to be reacting to that and um, it doesn't really identify specifically how we're doing that and the demand for it among the public in these areas that really aren't farmland related. And, uh, so anyway, Tom, I'm, uh, this, this, is a, this is a bill that probably has, has really good intentions in a lot of ways, but it's uh, painted it with such a broad brush. I think you're right that I think there's a way to rewrite this that that protects those important issues <coughs> that the Farm Bureau, I think, is interested in, and uh, but doesn't uh, doesn't hinder our ability as a government agency to, agency to deliver transportation projects in a meaningful and yeah. rapid way. Well, the conversation this morning, I, I was probably on your side as much as anything, or not on your side, but but on the side that. Uh, it says we we, we got we got to move forward, and uh, my uh, my concern about it is that they'll take uh, ground that's selling for six thousand dollars an acre and offer it to you, and you either take it or leave it, mm -hmm. and uh, the values that uh, that that are out there, uh, uh, and you've held onto that piece of ground, and you know for several generations and they offer you just what anybody else that's not the issue yeah. so they're going to have to come uh, come out with a great deal more money and uh, the farms over at Johnstown are, are moving you know they're they're being bought and sold uh, right along uh, from so-called uh, Jim Hyrule that sold the first farm over there uh, I know him very well and uh, uh, who'd have thunk that Jim Hyrule would sell four or five hundred acres over there, but you go waving that kind of money, and, and I think people in Delaware County same way. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we'll find something else to do with that 
of the background. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's a toughie. It's and I and it's a it's a hot spot right now with Delaware Marion counties because uh, yeah. everything's going on. So yeah, I yeah. Uh, so somewhere in that conversation, we, we we tend to equate all that eminent domain stuff that uh, needing to take a farm or a large large piece of ground for a large project with with our need for another thirty feet along an existing road in order to do a road project, and they're two totally different things. But the the way the law is written, it absolutely handcuffs us on that on that strip take along the existing roadway uh, kind of thing and somehow we've got to separate those those issues out in yeah. this in this legislation so um, yeah. if i can help i can help okay thank you mr chair if i could one other <coughs> uh, you addressed a couple of the uh, big concerns one of the other concerns um, i had when reading the legislation was um, there's provision in the uh, proposal that would uh, essentially, once uh, the public agency makes an offer, makes a, a subsequent written offer, so if the parties aren't able to agree on the initial offer, if the, the uh, agency makes a subsequent offer, a higher offer, that becomes the new floor of any future award, uh, which on the surface sounds reasonable. Unfortunately, what that does, I think, uh, my assessment is that that probably discourages public agencies from negotiating or putting anything in writing because uh, when you know you're bound to at least that higher amount as a future award, really what's the incentive on negotiating or putting any additional offer in writing when uh, if it ultimately goes to the court, the court's going to decide. And so I think there's a probably a well-intentioned desire to, to protect the property owner from um, you know, potentially getting less out of jury award. Uh, the reality is, I think, uh, from a public agency standpoint, there's more incentive to not negotiate uh, and just allow them to go ahead to you know, court and have let a jury decide. I think that's a terrible thing. I mean, we're talking about uh, dramatically increased litigation costs and, and tying up courts with cases that right now we resolve. Uh, just from you know my experience over the last 25 years, I mean, I would say 90 more than 95% of the parcels we have to acquire for a road project, we uh, end up settling uh, before they go to court. Only a very small fraction of the, the parcels involved ever get to a jury. We were always able to, or almost always able to reach a conclusion with the property owner. But I think one of the unintended consequences of this legislation would be potentially more uh, jury hearings. So um, that's troubling to, to me uh, beyond the necessity and the the other issues yeah because you know, that happens then you can you know you've got a lot of difficulty with your budgets because you're going way over your budgets pack you speak up i couldn't hear what you <coughs> said. said i'm sorry excuse me i said when that happens they go to jury trial and there's high awards there that's very detrimental because of the budget impact yeah on everything <clears throat> historically what we've seen happen with uh with with jury verdicts is um, the jury's presented with an appraisal from the government agency that's based on fair market what, what a, you know independent appraisers defined determine what the fair market value is and the uh, the property owner will get an appraiser um, to, uh, to 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 create a, an appraisal that's favorable to them, and so there's this disparity between appraisals, and juries really historically don't know what to do with how to reconcile that, and so they, over and over again, average the two appraisals, and will um, will make a uh, make a finding uh, on that, and um, and leaves leaves both parties unsatisfied really uh, with the whole process, so. Um, but I, Rob's point is a good one. That this, from the from the roadway side, from the util, the public utility side, from the county, you would have sewer and uh, you know potentially other utility uh, installations. This is, from my perspective, this is a solution in search of a problem. When you start looking at these the bigger 
uh, uh, larger scale um, public projects or those that are public private partnership projects it's, to it's totally different uh, it's a totally different animal and we're tr seems like we're trying to address all that with one piece of legislation that really uh, doesn't get to the heart of an issue I I really don't think there's anything that we're doing or that most communities are doing with our road program that has created a heartburn that's caused this legislation. But this legislation is going to create a lot of heartburn for us, uh, I think unintentionally. I think it's an unintended consequence of, of a bigger problem they're trying to address. So, so thank you for bringing it up. and. Uh, I uh, let me talk to you more more about yeah. something you could do to help us with that. Good. Thank you. Any other business? Hearing none, I'll stand uh, for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries.